Hey there, and welcome to this video looking at instance methods in Python 3. If you're returning here, then thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe and like, it really helps the channel out. So, what we're going to look at today are the four following themes here, and this is really aimed at beginners to object orientation. So I've got a basic class, and we're going to create an instance of this class in just a few minutes, and then we're going to try and create four really simple methods um, first one is going to try and increase the age by one. We'll do one to change the name. We'll do one that allows us to take uh, a new argument, which is going to be a new age. And once that's done, we're then going to look at implementing a class attribute or a class variable and using that inside of one of our methods. So the first thing we'd like to do is make an instance of the person class here. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what any of this does, in the previous video, I did a run through of a class explaining what def in it and what self means and what an instance is, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and make a class and assume that that one's already been watched. So let's say we have the variable John is equal to an instance of the person class. And then we're going to input, uh, let's say, John as the attribute for name. And let's say John is 35 here. Go ahead and hit run, make sure there's no errors, and yep, we're good to go. So just to recap what we've done, we've created an instance of the person class here, and we've passed in John and 35. That means that name and age have the values of John and 35. The, this idea of self here, self is always a reference back to the variable. So you just kind of replace self with John to think of it. So this is John the variable, John the string, and the age of 35. So down here we're saying the variable John, it has a name attribute, which is equal to the string of John. And then the variable John has an age attribute, which is equal to the value of 35. And we can prove that just by accessing an attribute using dot notation. So if I say, give me John's age, we get 35, just like that. So we'll jump straight in and do our first method, which is to increase the age by one. So I'm going to just quickly move some space down here and we'll do our method right there in the middle. So whenever we're creating instance methods, you always want to line them up with the def in it or this constructor here. Um, if you did something outside like this here, this would just be a regular function. Uh, what makes it a method is that it sits inside of the class here. So if I was to go ahead and say def here, whatever I do now, is going to become an instance method because it's inside of the scope of the class. And what I want to do is just give it a, a, a nice simple name. Let's just say, um, let's say uh, increase age um, one, for example. And with an instance method, we always want to pass in self as the first parameter here. That basically means that later on, when we do we say John dot increase age one, this variable John is automatically passed here to basically say, right, we want to do this upon this variable here. So it just means later on that if we have two or more of this instance, it's effectively saying, I want this method to operate specifically on this instance. So I'm going to do self colon here. And what we'll do is something really simple inside. I'm just going to say self dot age plus equals one like this. Let's bring this up. And what we'll do is I'm going to move this line down and I'm going to call this method here, just so I, we can see John created with an age of 35. We'll call the method, we'll look at John's age, and that should have increased to 36. So I'm going to do John dot increase. If I can spell it right, there we go. There. Okay, so we see John went from 35. We called the method, and now it's 36 here. So suppose if you were to go, go ahead and call this twice, we would now have, let's see, 37. Nice and easy. So let's just reflect on this self part here. So because this is an instance method, this self effectively, just think of this as being swapped out for whichever variable we're calling this on. So because we're doing john.increaseAge1, self becomes john, so therefore saying john.age plus equals one, like that. Next up, we're going to do one which allows us to change the name here. So I'm going to tick this one off. And this next one's going to be to change the name. And um, we'll do something fairly similar, except the idea for this one is that we're going to have an additional argument in here, 
which is going to be that new name. So same principle, get your defs in line with each other. And let's say this is called, so nice and simple, change name. We're going to say self, and then we're going to do new name like this here. So what's going to happen this time, uh, if I just quickly build up the call first, if I do John dot change name, um, let's just say I quickly just do this and write pass to make nothing happen. If I call change name the same way, uh, get rid of this for now, this is going to complain that I haven't passed in this argument. And there we go. So it's missing one required argument, new name. That's basically because it wants something in here now. So let's say I did, um, let's say John wants to become Alex, for example. Uh, let's run that. So now that's satisfied now because I've passed in Alex as new name. We now just need to use it inside of this here. And all we're going to do, again, same principle, we've passed in self. So we're going to use that inside here as well. Self.name is equal to new name here. Now, let's just quickly talk about why we have self.name and then this hasn't, there's no self for this one. That's because if you imagine the way this is called, so John dot change name, Alex, okay? So self was a reference to the variable John, and then new name simply takes on the value of this string, Alex. And all we say here is John's name is equal to this new string we've just passed in. So we don't need self here because we're simply taking that value of Alex from the parameter and saying, right, take that and let's give that string to john.name. So john.name is now equal to Alex. And if we just go ahead and print this to verify, john.name, there we go, just like that. So that's our second method done. Let's go ahead and see what's next. So now we want to do it with checks. So what we're going to do this time is do a little bit of verification inside here. And I think what I'll do, I'm going to use the same method. So suppose we have a, a rule in place. Imagine we want to say, right, it has to be of a certain length and we want it to be a string. So I think that'll be a, a reasonable solution. Uh, so what we'll say is we'll add a little bit of validation up here. So we basically say, uh, if this string passes validation, yeah, then we can say John's name is equal to that new string because it passes validation. Uh, if not, we won't change it and we'll just print off a message. So we could keep it really simple. We could say, let's do, uh, for example, we could do if is instance. And what this does, this checks the type. So I first want to check that new name is actually a string. So if I can say, uh, if this happens to be a string, only then can we do this. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll just return here. So we'll let's put this here. So basically this method will end if we've changed the name. So what we can do underneath the return, uh, we can say name not changed. And we'll just quickly test this. So that's fine. Uh, let's pass in something that is that is gonna make this become false. So if I pass in that's something that's not a string, this won't happen. And then we'll jump down to the print statement here. So let's try and pass in an integer instead. So if I pass in one, two, three, new name is now an integer. Um, and this will return to so this will be false. This won't happen. Uh, the return won't happen. And then we'll jump down to this. So we should see a print statement now if things go to plan. There we go, name not changed. Okay, let's bring it back to uh, Alex here. There we go, just like that. And let's make it so we want a bit more validation. And we'll say, and the length of that new name uh, has to be, let's say it has to be greater than three. So Alex will pass, yeah, that has a length greater than three. Uh, let's just try a really short name and just check this. There we go. So nice and simple. And if I pass in a longer name as well, that should also work. Nice. Okay, so that's the third of our methods done. The last method we're going to do is going to be effectively importing a new age, but it's going to be using a class attribute here. Um, and for this one, what I'm going to be doing is a bit similar to this. So I'll, I'll talk it through up here first. We're going to ask the person to input a new age. Uh, we'll do some checks. We'll make sure it's an integer. Uh, we'll make sure it's a reasonable number. And then we'll say, okay, if that didn't go to plan, we'll actually 
fix the value for them using a class attribute here. For the class attribute, we define it above this here. So recall that whenever we create an instance of person, this method runs straight away and gets everything set up. The actual template exists whenever you run the Python program. So if I went ahead and here and did um, default age is equal to, let's say it's 25 here. Imagine that kind of from line 11 upwards, this bit already exists, but then this bit all kicks off whenever we create a new instance. So without us even creating an instance, we can access this value here. Uh, and we can prove that really quickly down here. And uh, let's say if I just did print um, person dot default age and hit run, we get 25. And that's because this now belongs to the class and not the instance. So anything that has self, in this case here, like all the ones we've done with John, like John.name, John.age, they're all instance attributes because they belong to John. However, this one doesn't have self before it, it therefore it belongs to the class. So you can see, think of this as like a shared variable. It's like an umbrella variable. So if you had four or five attributes, you know, instances, sorry, they could all have access to this here. Uh, so let's go ahead and create this method. So I'm gonna create this down here. And uh, let's go ahead and say um, def change age here. We'll do the same thing, self, we want this to be called by an instance and then we'll do new age here. Now what we're going to do for this one is, first of all, we can actually hijack this. So we can use the same thing here. So we can say uh, if is instance. So we will first want it to be an integer. And let's say, we'll do a more complex one for this here. We'll do new age. Let's say it has to be uh, greater than zero and new age has to be less than 100. So imagine that was our condition. It has to be an integer, it has to be between zero and 100 here, or greater than zero or less than 100. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll do self.age is equal to that new age. And then same as last time, we'll just go ahead and return here, just like that. Now, what we'll do instead, uh, actually let me just print first here. Uh, let's just do uh, age not changed. And then let's go ahead and just call that down here. So I'll remove this. Let's bring back our instance. And then we're going to do John dot change age. And let's, uh, let's pass in an acceptable one. Let's do 45. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's pass in the string 45 instead. So this should be different. And there we go. So that hasn't changed because that immediately made this turn false. Therefore, these two lines didn't happen. So we jump down to the print and we see this. Let's make the, let's just quickly verify that this one works. Uh, let's see, suppose you pass in someone that's too old. Age not changed. Yeah, and I suppose we have someone who's minus one years old, which wouldn't be ideal. Yep, same thing again. So just some simple verification here. Uh, and we're just doing that before we then go ahead and change the instance attributes. Now what we can do instead, rather than just doing this, we can actually do the following, self.age is equal to, now let's bring this guy back, this. We'll, we'll make it change to a default instead. So we'll do person, let's see, here we go. That's my auto correct, driving me crazy. There we are, person.defaultAge. Uh, now we can say, uh, resorting to, default of, and let's do an F string. Uh, we'll do this here, and I'm gonna do that like there. There we go. There we go. So we'll just walk through that one more time. We called John.changeAge minus one, and we have self a new age. Self is always a reference back to John here. So we we'll so we'll basically say, um, if we pass all this validation, John's age is going to be this new age that we've passed in. So that would work for situations like this, for example. So 56 would be fine. So if I go ahead and print this just to prove it's worked. 56, yep, nice. Uh, then let's say I don't make this pass. So this time this fails. So this, uh, this conditional comes out to be false. These two lines don't happen. So we run this print statement 
and say actually let's make the age equal to default age which is a variable that belongs to the class. It belongs to the class because we've defined it above the init and we don't have self, it's got no reference to self. Just remember that self always refers back to the variable. So without self, we're basically saying this is a shared value amongst the whole class here. So we'll finish that there. Of course, feel free to go back and watch the first video on getting our class set up. Uh, and over the coming weeks, I'm going to be doing a range of videos looking at object orientation. So looking at things like class methods, static methods, all that, all that kind of really cool stuff. Uh, again, guys, thanks for watching, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next session. Cheers.